First of all, I want to give honor to God, who's the head of my life. Uh, I bring you greetings from the Sanders family. Uh, I got in a discussion last night with my neighbor, and he asked me would I come down and do a video. So a lot transpired, and I decided, okay, he wanted to talk about 2020 and some of the learnings. And uh, we've been taking a class, and one of the things that stood out in my mind uh, was servant leader. And uh, I thought about the life of Jesus as a man, as he walked among us. And the greatest lesson that Jesus taught his disciples were to be better servants. Well better givers. All right. yeah. This has been a challenging year for all of us. Yeah. This year has tested all our strengths and faith. All right. Some lost loved ones, myself included. Right. Some lost their jobs. All right. Some lost their freedoms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some even lost their minds. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm here to say that God is in control. Amen. All right. All right. While sitting writing this, I thought about my role as a man, as a father, as a husband, All right. and as a leader of this community. Yeah. As I sat looking over my life as a father, a husband, a provider, it's not a role that get a lot of Praise. Amen. But it must be done. Amen. Amen. God has blessed my family and I for a mighty long time. Amen. He protected us from the dangers of the world. He made a way out of no way. Amen. I became a servant for my family that what allowed me to lead them. And that is the message that Jesus wants us to follow. Yeah. In order to lead, you must serve. All right. Yeah. All right. Jesus was a servant leader. Yeah. And he stayed on God's mission. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. We have to stand on our core values, which should line up with God's mission. Yeah. We need to be up changing minds and lives in our community. All right. Brothers, lifting brothers up. Amen. Amen. If you truly want to do God's will, you have to put your hand in God's hand and allow him to lead. Thank you.
first I give honor to God, who is the head of my life, to the pastors, to the ministers. Amen. I thank and I praise God for being here on this day, being saved and sanctified. Amen. Satisfied with Jesus. Amen. This is a year that has been, oh, it has been a strange year. But amen. Through it all, I know that God don't make mistakes. And amen, God knows what he's doing. And everything he does, he does it for a reason. And I have learned to accept and praise God in whatever situation that I'm in. Amen, this has been a trying year. And amen, God has brought me through so many things. And I, I pray, I say, Lord, don't let me mumble and complain. Help me to go through all your tests and your trials because I know that my tests and my trials are to make me strong. And I say, Lord, just give me the strength to go through without mumming and complaining. And a lot of times I catch the flesh wanting to complain. And then I remember all the goodness of God and what he's doing. And I say, Lord, the little things that I have gone through. Compared to what others have gone through, I have no problem. And I have no reason to complain. And my soul say yes to whatever your will and whatever your way. And I said, Lord, learn me to be content. Learn me to be content when I'm feeling good. Learn me to be content in the bad things. Learn me to be content when I'm happy and when I'm sad. And I thank God that I am a work in progress. I'm not where I should be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. And I thank God for just being real in my life. I thank God for keeping me and, and sustaining me. And I, God, I thank him for building me and making me. And I said myself, I said, Lord, I don't make New Year resolutions. All I do is say, Lord, help me to do better in 221 than I did in 220. And this is my desire. And I thank God whilst I'm on it for all the young ministers that he has placed in our midst. And the Bible said that God called the young because they are strong. And he called the old because they know the way. And I say, Lord, help me to be an example to the young women because this is my job. My job is to teach them how to be women of God. My job is to teach them how to love their husband, respect their husband, and be by his side. Not in his front and not in his back, but to be that real on the side. And I thank God for just being so good. I thank God for my pastor. And I say this to everybody. I thank God for Pastor Johnson and his family. Because a lot of pastors are pastors to those that in the church and those that they know. But I can say I thank God that I got a pastor that loves everybody. Nobody is a stranger. And he goes out of his way to people that he don't even know. And this is something you can't find too often. It's a rarity, and a lot of times we don't give him enough praise. We don't give him enough honor. And I want to say I thank God for you. I thank God for what you have been in my life, you and your family. And I thank God for the church family. And I can say truly, I thank God for just bringing us this far and hopefully he'll bring us to see another year.
the third chapter, verse 13 to 14. And it reads like this, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forget those things which are behind, reach forth unto those things which are before. In the 14 and finally, I press towards the mall for the pride of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to talk about just a little while. Uh, what should I do next year? What should I do next year? We, 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 can, we can look around what all took place in this year, in 2020. And, and we need to know what to do when it comes up to 2020. One. And, and, and Paul here in the text let us know what we should do in the text. It, it, it's three things we should do. Number one, we should forget the past. What should you do next year? Forget the past failure. Forget the past uh, misunderstood what you're going through. Just forget those kind of things. See, let the new year be a new time and a new beginning in what you're going through. All right. See, if you have bachelor you know, or you have did things ain't right toward God in this year, you know how folks, some folks say, I, I make a new year revolution. I'm going to come to church more. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going I'm to I'm do things different this year. Mm -hmm. So what we should do this year, we, we should continue to look unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. See, Paul tells us in the text that forget those things which are behind. And, and, and some people are saying, Preacher, how can I forget that I lost a loved one? How can I forget that, 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 that this COVID-19 is still around? How can I for, for, forget that? How? What should I do? Number one, forget the past. Number two, Press mm. forward. Keep going in the name of the Lord. The text said, I press toward the mall. So to let you know you need to forget mm. and continue on the journey for the Lord. Mm. Press forward. Paul and the reach forward to those things which are ahead. Right. See, 2020 is going to be behind. So we got to press toward 2021. All right. Because we are more than conquered through Christ Jesus who strengthened us. Mm -hmm. The last said, Puma. Number three, focus on Christ. All right. Well, to order to withstand what we're going, had a bad year in 2020, to order to, to withstand, 2000, to, to, to succeed in 2021, we must focus on Christ more. I, I think it was the, the pandemic teaching us to, to continue to focus on Christ more. Because it let me know that the church, some church is closed. How can I worship God? How can I give God some time? You've only been focused on God before this came. All right. Mm -hmm. You got to continue to focus on Christ. What should I do next year? You should focus on Christ. You should let the Lord be in your heart. You should let the Lord have a, a, a center part in your life. All right. I'm going to my clothes. I ask a question. What should I do next year? I should focus on Christ. The reason why I should focus on Christ because he died for me. All right. Up on a hill called Calvary, All right. but he didn't stay there. Mm -hmm. My Bible tell me that they march him up on Calvary Hill. Mm -hmm. They put nails in his hand. All right. They ribbed his feet. Mm -hmm. For you and I, he died. So that, that the focus. That the focus. Focus on Christ. Mm -hmm. That we shall all be doing. Because one day when we leave this world, we, want, we need to know where we're going to spend in eternity. 
the tent let alone we got to press toward the high calling in Jesus Christ. And that high calling is heaven. It's a song that says, heaven is my God. All right. So we should continue to live for Christ. We need to continue to learn how to live for Christ through whatever we're going through. So I ask the question, what should we do next year? We should continue to press forward for Christ Jesus in 2021. May God bless you, may he keep you. All right, so I'm here with Miss with Miss Janice Watson, and I'm, I'm here talking and thinking about reflections from 2020 and what to look um, forward to in 2021. So, Miss Watson, as you think about the year 2020, um, how does it? What does it make you think about? What does it make you? What does it? How does it make you feel? Um, I feel like the pandemic was here for a reason. I feel like maybe it will somehow improve all of us, but I just. Hate the loss of life. Yeah. yeah, I think that, you know, throughout this pandemic, it's, it's caused all of us to kind of shift the way we've been moving and thinking. And, you know, I mean, think about one of the things we talk about all the time is having plans, right? Right. And it feels like 2020, in many regards, um, kind of threw a wrench in all of our plans, you know? I'm sure I've heard a couple of messages about having 2020 vision and all of those things, but now, you know, God kind of, Stop us in our tracks. So what have you found to be probably the most um, outside of the desk? Was there anything else that really, that you felt like really impacted 2020 for you personally? Uh, losing, what it felt like losing all my health for a while there. When, mm -hmm. You know, I look at pic a picture I took last year and I don't look like the same person to me. Yeah. But, um, but I, I felt like those weeks where I was, uh, so sick, mm -hmm. uh, it probably did me good because I had a chance to study something I needed to study. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's, mm -hmm. I felt the hand of God in that. If I hadn't gotten the COVID, I wouldn't have all that, all that math study. Gotcha. And um, in regards to your health, like, do you feel like God has been working steadily in your health to help improve it? I think so. Um, what changes have you made because of your health? Is there any specific change you mind sharing about your health? Oh, I, I just wasn't able to do more. Gotcha. And so by God's grace, you're able to do more now. Um, I, from what I understand, I know that you serve some integral roles in, um, in the behind the scenes of the church. And we are thankful for that because more than anything, you know, a lot of people always talk about the people who are out front and what they do and what they say. But one of the things that, you know, I've learned over the years and I think is very true, especially to people like you, Ms. Watson, is that those people behind the scenes are the ones who really make things work. Um, it's those calls and those small acts of service that really do um, move the church along. And it's the it's the unthank it's the, the the jobs that people don't see and get to thank people for that I think mean a lot. And I believe that's something you very much added to our congregation. Mm -hmm. And looking forward, so looking forward to 2021. What are you looking forward to 2021? Number one in your relationship with God, but number two, maybe personally. I'll just have to trust God. To... We're thankful for you, Miss Watson, and um, I hope you guys pray along with her as she seeks to do well and follow Jesus in 2021. Amen. And what a year 2020 has been. We've had so many ups, so many downs, so many twists, so many turns, and so much loss. The Glenn family has faced some of the biggest losses of our lives this year, uh, especially with the loss of what would have been our third child, who we affectionately call Baby Trey, for Uno, Dos, and Trace. But in everything that we've gone through, the Lord has been near to us. He's held us close. And he's shown us through his power that he loves us and he's fighting for us. Thank you. 
Well, it's no secret that 2020 has been a very rough year um, that has included many circumstances that have changed the way we live, um, whether it's been from where we can go to um, what we can do, um, even, um, even in many regards, um, how we interact with each other has changed dramatically. And this has caused us, in many ways, to become inconvenienced. And in a lot of ways, it gets us uncomfortable because we have to change our way of life. However, discomfort can be a good thing. In fact, I believe that God uses our discomfort to move us towards change. God, I believe, has orchestrated 2020 to give us what we need in discomfort so that we are able to change. And as we change, God reminds us that no matter how bad or how unruly or how strange things get, no matter what happens on this earth, nothing that we go through is out of his control. And God also wants us to be reminded as well is that as we as we have gone through 2020, in many regards, there have been many people who've been lost. There have been many people who've gotten sick, many people who've had to adjust ways of life and have experienced a, quite a bit of loss. However, God is reminding us as believers that if he, as he brings us to the end of 2020, not only can he get us here, but he can also get us through the years to come. We find ourselves, um, it, this reminds me of the story of um, the Israelites. Um, many of you guys may be familiar with um, the Israelites and their exodus from Egypt. If you're familiar with the story, we remember that the Israelites, after 400 years in captivity, um, were finally heard by, were, were heard by God through all the ordeal, and God sends a leader by the name of Moses to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Well, in doing such, he, he frees um, millions of people and he has to get them out of Egypt and into the promised land. But as they are escaping from Egypt and headed towards the promised land, they are put between a rock and a hard place. The rock, um, the rock essentially, is the Red Sea. As they were moving towards, as they were moving towards the promised land, which was Canaan, they were caught at a place where they had to, where they were stopped by the by a very bo large body of water. But then, as they were looking at the body of water, they not only recognized that they were at a rock, but then they were also at a hard place, in the sense of the Egyptian, their Egyptian captors were on their tail and didn't want them to leave and wanted to capture them so that they could remain in slavery and continue to live in a life that kept them oppressed, saddened. And, keep, and kept them without wanting to make change. However, although this seems like a rock and a hard place, it seems like a place where God essentially has them at a dead end. God uses this circumstance essentially to orchestrate a powerful, powerful miracle. And God uses a circumstance to teach them more about who he is. And for us as believers, if we wanna make it, um, to 20, through 2021, we are going to have to stop and recognize who God is and his power. And we're gonna to have to recognize it using um, two very specific things. Number one, we have to be still. You see, in the story, as the Israelites are advancing towards the sea, they're also complaining, they're worried, they're scared, they have anxieties, and they're worried about if they're going to make it, and, and, and the fact that they may, be out, they may be dying out here in the wilderness. However, as, um, as they are doing that, Moses looks up and he reminds them that their salvation, their very deliverance is at hand, but they have to be still. The second thing that um, we're reminded of is not only to be still, but to move on. You see, as the Israelites were advancing toward the Red Sea and they were facing the anxiety and the fears and everything that was going on in their life at the moment, there came a moment in their rock and hard place where it was probably tempting to have a look back at the past and, and, and wonder about how, you know, wonder about where they were. Or it was also tempting to just be stuck in the present looking at the fact that they think that they may, they may be on the verge of death. And it was easy for them to forget that God was trying to get them somewhere. You see, for many of us, God wants to move us forward to doing what's best. 
Sometimes what's best for us is to recognize the past but not be stuck in it. It's sometimes it's also good to recognize although the present the present can be tough that at some point God is trying to get us somewhere in the future. And so one of the things that, that we need to understand is that um, as God is trying to move us forward, we have to choose to move um, our uncertainty to trust. For them to recognize that their salvation was at hand, they would have to trust that God was right and that he knew what he was doing. But not only that, they would also have to move from fear to courage. Remembering that, um, remembering that um, um, having courage is not necessarily the absence of fear, it's moving forward in spite of the fear. Notice that as um, notice that even in the midst of everything, Moses, um, who had just had this courageous moment of telling the people to um, to be still and, and see the deliverance from God. He was also looking to God for to be affirmed. And yet God was saying, Moses, you need to raise your staff and then part the sea and tell the Israelites to move on. They needed to move on to what was better. We have to understand that as we move on, transformation can't take place if we don't decide to move on and take hold of the opportunities that God has given us. It may be that the most difficult thing that we go through is also the right thing that we must do. In conclusion, we have to be still, but also move on. But I want to make it clear that although those two words sound like they should not be in the same place or, um, or, or um, that they seem like a contradiction, they're actually not. You see, for us, um, for us to be victorious, for us to walk in the will of God in 2021, we have to take time to stand and be still. We have to recognize who God is and we have to, and we have to acknowledge his greatness, his awesomeness, and his power. And if 2020 was in the indicator, he knows how to get our attention. But also, when you see the Lord, then you will have the courage to take the lead and to move on. And what do you move on to? You move on to what God has that's best for us. My prayer is that as you, Mark, as we have gotten to the end of 2020 and we're looking forward into 2021, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who's in the future and who holds the future. And so my encouragement for you, all of you who watched this video today, is to number one, be still and recognize God's awesomeness and power. But number two, move on to better and greater things. Sometimes those hard, difficult things are also the right things to do. And it's part of God's will for us to endure those things so that he can begin to transform us into better men and women of God so that we can go on to do great things in years to come. As I, as I conclude, I want to wish all of you um, a happy new year. My prayer is that, you're all, that, um, that your new year is um, blessed and prosperous. But I also want to encourage you that should you, have to, should you have an opportunity where difficulty comes in your life, and it will, be encouraged that you can get through it. The rock and hard place that you're in now is only a pool or a petri dish for transformation that God can do in your life. And as I close, let me pray for you. Um, let me pray for you and pray for us in the new year. Dear Jesus, God, thank you, God, for getting us to the very end of 2020. It's been an arduous, long, and difficult journey. However, you've helped us get to this point. There's been death. There's been hurt. There's been tragedy. There's been injustice. But God, we also see that you're doing transforming work in all of our lives. God, my prayer, God, is that as we walk into 2021, Lord, that you would gird us up. God, that you would help us to, God, to, to not get stuck in the past, to not simply just look at our present situation, God, and, and so forth, but to look forward to what you have ready and waiting for us in the year to come. And Lord, my prayer is this, Lord, that as we march into this new year, that we would be still, that we would recognize your power, 
that you have our attention, that we would understand your love for us, your grace, your mercy, and that we would take advantage of it. God, forgive us for what we fall short. Help us to walk in, a, help us to be new creatures and walk in a newness in 2021. But God, also help us to move on past the pains, past the hurts. Help us, God, to know what to do with those. Help us how to, to help apply the lessons needed from those pains and hurts. And even the good things that we've experienced, God, um, even if people feel like we haven't experienced many good things. But God, we know that you are in control. God, you're never out of control. And we thank you for getting us to this very point. In Jesus, amen.